Hello Internet! In this video, I am going to share some tips with you that could, potentially, help you learn TinyGrad and maybe contribute to it. The tips are going to be in increasing order of difficulty, so make sure you watch till the end. Tip number one, learn to use Git more effectively. Seriously, if you're using the browser to look at the code, you're not doing it right. Clone the repository. This will make it much easier for you to look at the history of the code. If you run git log now and redirect its output to a file, you get to see the entire history. This is a large file, but if you get to the end of it, you'll see the first commit. Start here. So, copy this commit hash. And use it to create a new branch. And voila! You're now looking at TinyGrad from three years ago. This is way simpler. And look at that. Not even a hundred lines of code. You can always switch back to the master and compare how much things have changed. Look at that! It's almost a thousand lines of code now. This can be intimidating if you jump right into it, but not if you've seen how it evolved. I suggest you take a look at snapshots from several older comets. This will help you better understand the thought processes and decisions of the developers. Tip number two. Use black. Yeah, George Hotz wants to minimize the number of lines of code in this repository, which is why understanding the code can be hard. But you don't have to look at the code the way it is. You can simply reformat it using black. Let's just look at lazy.py. This code is quite dense. But now, let's reformat it. And now, the code looks way more readable, isn't it? You, of course, don't want to commit this reformatted code. So, you can simply stash it when you're done reading it. And at any time, you can pop it out of the stash and look at the reformatted code again. Tip number three, understand a linear transformation. You need to understand how weights and biases work. Let's create a tensor called W store the weights. Then create a tensor called X. That will be the input. The shape of these tensors is important because we want to be able to multiply them. And you can use the at symbol to do that. Note that we need to transpose the W tensor here. All right, now let's create a bias tensor called B. TinyGrad can expand your tensor when necessary, which is why we do not have to specify the second dimension here. Finally, let's add the bias tensor to the product matrix. And there you go. You just created a linear transformation. This is one of the core workhorses of deep learning. The weights and bias tensors are the trainable parameters. This operation is so common that TinyGrad offers it out of the box. Just import NN from TinyGrad. And now, you can just create an instance of the linear class. And you can pass X to it. Pretty cool, isn't it? And now, let's compare the multiply and add operation with the output of the linear layer. They look identical to me.
Tip number four, create a simple neural network. Let's create a new file. Start by importing tensor and NN from TinyGrad. And now let's create a class for our neural network. I'll call it MyNet. We're going to have two linear layers in this class. Note that the two numbers we pass here are the input features and output features. The input features of the next layer must match the output features of the previous layer. This essentially means that our neural network takes two inputs and spits out one output. 12 can be thought of as the number of neurons in a hidden layer. And now, Let's create a call function so that we can call an instance of this class. And here, first, let's pass x to the first linear layer. But now, we need to use an activation function. Let's use the sigmoid function. Next, pass x to the second linear layer. Finally, return x. Our trivial neural network is now ready. Create an instance of it. Great! The next thing we need is an optimizer. This will help us do gradient descent. Let's use the stochastic gradient descent optimizer. You need to pass your model parameters to it. And you can get those by calling the getParameters function. Next, you need to specify the learning rate. Let's go with 0 0.001. I think I'm going to try running this program now to make sure I don't have any errors. No errors. Wonderful. Let's create some training data for it. You are free to use your own data so long as you have two inputs and one output. I'm going to use the truth table of a logic gate to keep things simple. Note that I'm using reshape such that I have two values per row as inputs. And one value per row as output. And there are exactly four rows. It's time to create a training loop. How about 100 epochs? Not sure about this one, might increase it later. And then another loop to go through the training data one row at a time. This is not very efficient, but makes things more understandable. So, now let's get what our model predicts. This is called the forward pass. And calculate the loss. We can calculate the mean squared error loss here. So subtract the predicted value from the expected value. Square it. And then call the mean function. And now we do the backward pass by calling the backward function. Finally, we use the optimizer step method to do the gradient descent. Um, let's print the output of the untrained model here, just so you can see how random an untrained model can be. And here, let's print the output of the trained model. Let's, let's make this a much higher number. Say, 2000. This will make things more certain. Let's run the model now and see if our model learns our training data. So this is the untrained model's output. It's just four random numbers. After training, it should say something close to one, zero, zero, one. And sure enough, we get one, zero, zero, one. But just waiting without any logs is boring as hell. 
Let us create a progress bar. So import TQDM. And here, wrap the range function in a call to TQDM. And I'm going to increase this to 4,000. Okay, let's run the program again. Nice, we have a cool progress bar now. That's all for today, folks. Hope you found this video useful. Please like the video and subscribe. That definitely helps the channel. And leave a comment if you have any doubts. Have a good day. Bye.